made it to Bolivia. Yay. Um, <laughs> he caught my eight rand of uh, the Bolivian border crossing for a uh, German American uh, citizen who entered Peru with the Bolivia uh, with an American passport and was not be able to use my German passport to enter Bolivia. So if you are a dual citizen and have and hold both passports of an American passport and a passport where you don't have to pay a fee, make sure that you enter the country before Bolivia with the passport that doesn't have to pay the fee. I know it sounds really confusing, but I had to pay $160 um, at the Bolivian border because I couldn't use my German passport because I entered Peru and exit Peru with my American passport. So that's my rant. Um, so if any of you have ever seen the Hulk, which I'm sure you have, right before he turns to the Hulk when he's starting to get angry, he's like, Argh! that was that was my at the border crossing. Well, and then also um, for for the specific two countries that are having a really hard time, Americans and Israelis. Make sure that you have your documentation in line, meaning that you need your copy of a passport, a passport picture, uh, pristine, preferably $20 bills, no stains, no crinkles. They will reject them or tell you they are fake if they're $100 bills. So I think, I think there's a little bit of a border scam going on. The, all the $100 bills that we saw go through Bolivia, they said were fake. But they got them in the U.S. and they looked very legit. I don't think they were fakes. What's going on is they have a buddy out front that changes money from U.S. dollars to Bolivian dollars who he had no problem taking the $100 bills and taking an exorbitant fee to change that money. So uh, I think that's what's going on. Just go in with 20s. It'll make life easier for you. And uh, make sure that you just have it all in order. We did uh, cross the border a bit with Peru slash Bolivia hub, which was kind of nice because we don't speak that much Spanish. So if you do don't, um, I know a lot of backpackers say um, it's like the cheating way because you're like on a uh, tour bus, but it really, really ni was nice and helpful for us to kind of cross the border because we knew as Americans we're gonna have a harder time and they sure didn't make it easy and uh, they were not super nice, so just prepare yourself if you're American or Israeli. Um, so La Paz, um, I have to give a shout out to um, Lindsay. Lindsay. Hi Lindsay. Hi Lindsay. Mm -hmm. um, Lindsay was great, very friendly, extremely helpful. But beyond that, she runs uh, Airbnbs and has some great ones at very fair prices. Uh, we stayed in one, it was on the 10th floor, had a nice overview of the whole city. Beautiful place. It and was, a heater. Yeah, it had a heater too. There's no indoor heating in La Paz and it gets down to freezing overnight. Um, so uh, the Airbnb that we stayed at, one of hers, uh, two bedrooms, uh, one of them with an ensuite, another half bath, a uh, full, fully equipped kitchen, uh, had a nice living room area with movies that you can watch. Great place, loved it. Um, she had another one which was a little bit cheaper. Uh, what was the prices on the two? I think 21 was the cheaper one and then 35 was, well 35 with the Airbnb fee, so 30 I think. Yeah, okay. Um, the other one, um, you share all the common spaces with other people in it, but was very cute as well. I think I have some clips I can include in there of them. Um, uh, La Paz, it's your standard big city, has all the stuff that you would want to look for in a big city if that's what you're looking for. Um, uh, one really cool thing, they had uh, they had zebras that helped people cross the street in South America. South America is not terribly known for people wanting to stop to let you cross the street. And they have, God, I don't know, probably hundreds of zebras yeah. all spread across the city. People dressed up in zebra costumes really that cute. go, oh, you have to stop. <laughs> <laughs> they they were very, very lively. cute, yeah, and very friendly. Uh, from La Paz, we took a tour with Deep Rainforest Jungle. Um, uh, it was a floating tour on a raft. Um, a raft. Uh, it was a neat way to see the jungle. Uh, why don't you say something about it? <laughs> uh, 
uh, be prepared to sit on a float for a long, long time. I think that um, the experience of experiencing the jungle without a motor was definitely um, a plus. To, to be able to connect with nature that way, to hear the birds and all those things rather than being on a boat and having a background nose of a motor. Um, it was very, very, very uncomfortable because the communication from the tour operator was not very clear that we will be sitting on our backs. So just like any other backpackers things, it's like pack light. You're going on a jungle tour, so make sure that you pack light. So we only packed one back. So we were just kind of uncomfortable on the float. And um, another couple on the float also only packed one bag. Everybody um, packed yeah. one bag, yeah. basically. And so we didn't have enough bags to sit on. So they had to make some bags. But um, the, the tour guides, shout out to Ruben and Martin. Uh, you guys are amazing. They really, really tried their hardest to make our tour as enjoyable as it can be. So they're really, really great and cooked amazing meals on the way with uh, makeshift um, food and literally <laughs> serving uh, food on the raft, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. Uh, I hope uh, Kevin will throw some pictures on there. Uh, being on a floating uh, raft with uh, some gas going and cooking and yeah that was yeah. very um it was, it was <laughs> an interesting adventure i'm glad i did it i would not suggest other people do it um so there was a few issues we started about an hour and a half late um that's not the biggest issue the biggest issue was this time of the year the water is moving very slowly um if the water was moving twice as fast it would have been a much more enjoyable trip uh, the problem is we ended up spending 10, 12 hours a day on this raft, which was not very comfortable. Um, we ended up missing three of our four, uh, three of the four treks, so we only went on one, and it was pretty rushed. We did get to see a waterfall, which was really neat. And I, a jaguar. I liked the water. Oh yeah, we saw a jaguar. Uh, we saw capybara. Cap capybara. Cap capybara. <laughs> yeah, a big water rat. Capybara. Yeah, that's what they are. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, other than that, I don't know, I know it was a great trip um, as far as like everything that was not sitting on the boat. <laughs> so just to give you an idea, we started our raft in Gwinnai and we rafted all the way to Ronobarque. So when you go on to TripAdvisor, I don't know why the reviews are like so amazing, um, but it's, it's really... I guess everybody's experience is different and yes if the river is going or flowing much quicker you have four walks and it would be much much uh, more comfortable if you were splitting it so let's say you have nine hours on the boat and you have to raft for nine hours but you're splitting it up where you're sitting for three hours or four hours and you're walking for an hour and then you're getting back that's that's definitely reasonable but being stuck on the float for 10 or 12 hours was a little bit rough that's and then weird. uh mosquitoes Oh, everywhere mosquitoes everywhere so we didn't we didn't get as bad as some people there um, but uh, we, we had what we went in with was ex officio clothes they have built-in uh, bug repellent in it it's a line called bugs away we went in with 100% deep um, you need a minimum of 60 yeah. um, would definitely suggest having a hundred um, because the mosquitoes will eat you alive yes and so just make sure that you do that and uh, just the spring cortisone, like anti-itch cream, mm -hmm. really help for us because it's just really not fun. But uh, Kevin will throw some pictures in there and uh, show you uh, our battle wounds of the jungle. Uh, we think we ended up getting bit because we walked through the water, which washed off the um, repellent. repellent. Yeah, so walking from land to boat washes off repellent, and so our ankles got bit. Um, Anyway, so yeah. I think that's all. It's our tour from uh, back and... No, that's not all. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. I got a brand new shirt. Oh, yep. How is it? How is it? Yeah. <laughs> I got a brand new shirt. Oh, I now God. have five shirts. <laughs> he wanted to make sure that you guys can see the polka dot, so... Yeah. Make sure that to comment below on his new shirt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyway, so we, we made it uh, in one piece out of the jungle and uh, continue our travels in Bolivia. And oh, one more thing. People in Bolivia are actually really nice. Oh, yeah. The last two months, we have met all travelers 
from all over in Ecuador and Peru and we've been asking them how they're liking Bolivia and they all had told us that they hated Bolivia and because they, they no no they say they love the landscape but they hated the people because the people are so rude so a uh, shout out to the Bolivian people you guys are not rude um, I really like you but the caveat is we don't really speak Spanish so they might be talking shit about us and we don't really <laughs> understand so <laughs> anyways uh, so far no no rude people or um, any bad experience with the local people so yay bye love you guys bye the way to the jungle and we found a problem.